Hello and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. It's been a while since I've been able to say that. With the release of the Xbox version of the game earlier this month, as alongside the awesome honor mode update, with that mode there's gonna be a lot of builds that are gonna be great as a single class focus, but multi-classes are fun and there's some seriously strong ones that we've been learning about since the launch of the game. Today I've got a pile of awesome, really strong multi-class builds to consider with a variety of playstyles. This should serve as quick beginner ideas for you to then flesh out. And as a reminder, Baldur's Gate 3 is extremely forgiving with its respec mechanics, the strength elixirs, and the busted items, which I won't be fully talking about today. Either way, let's get started. To kick us off, we have that well-known classic, the Tavern Brawler Monk, because Tavern Brawler is heavily argued to be the strongest feat in the game. This multi-class is using that to its maximum with a combination of Open Hand Monk and the Thief Rogue. The Monk provides the strong basic attacks, the extra attack, and Thief provides an extra bonus attack per turn, which is best used on Flurry of Blows, letting you attack four times a turn without any buffs or haste or anything like that. The potential is pretty ridiculous, but the damage is really high thanks to Tavern Brawler specifically. You also get lots of utility, like Stunning Strike, or Steps of Win for Dash and Disengage, or the awesome Deflect Missiles and more. The final level balance for this build though would be eight levels into Open Hand Monk, four into the Thief Rogue, getting you three feats total and lots of extra stats. So when you're ready to work in the rogue, probably when you're like level 6 or 7 on the monk, this is the path that's suggested. Rogue could be taken for the first level, with the following 6 levels then going into monk. At this point, you'll have your first feat with the monk at level 4, which is naturally the main event of the build, Tavern Brawler. You go for the plus 1 on constitution in this case. Tavern Brawler is the thing that's causing your unarmed attacks to work in your strength modifier, and it adds it twice to the damage and the attack rolls, which is broken. When using the elixir to have high strength, especially early, you are making a massive impact with that from this feat. The following three levels will go into Rogue then to get the Thief subclass going, the big power spike with flurry of blows on your bonus actions, and you'll also get another feat to further help your stats. All the last levels will then go into Monk, so you get eight in the Monk and four in the Rogue. With that, you have a great balance of stats and tons of options for utility, making great use of this very busted Tavern Brawler concept. But next, we can't really talk about Tavern Brawler Monk, without also talking about the throwing version, which is not just genuinely strong and well known at this point, but definitely one of the strongest things in the game. Again, Tavern Brawler causes unarmed attacks to use that strength modifier twice to damage and attack rolls, but it also does this to improvised weapons and yes, throwing. Particularly the fact that it affects your attack rolls is why this is so good, because it's way more likely to land. And the leveling setup for this is best used with a multi-class as well, but a triple one, Barbarian, Rogue, and Fighter. Fighter makes your life easier via the Eldritch Knight if you want to go that route you can bind a weapon to you which gives you lots of different options in the late game for what weapon to use but the build will be relying on the returning pike weapon which is found in act one either way so it's not exactly vital the barbarian is vital though you have rages meaning extra damage for both melee and throwing attacks but also this is where you'll get your extra attack and the berserker subclass gives you frenzy meaning you can use enraged throw you can use bonus actions to do your throws instead then and it adds your current strength modifier to the attack a second time so so a big damage increase. The rogue is providing you the extra bonus action from Thief, so you've got more chances to throw. The leveling is pretty simple. We start as Barbarian, and you want 17 strength and 16 constitution in particular to maximize the damage. We go Barbarian to level 3, where we can now take the Berserker subclass and get that frenzy. At 4, you've got your feet, where of course we're taking Tavern Brawler. In that case, you want the plus 1 strength. Now you've got 18. Then at 5 on your Barbarian, you've got extra attack. And from there, we can start dipping into the rogue until level 3 for the Thief. So now you've got that extra bonus section. The last levels then could go nicely into fighter, getting a fighting style of your choice, probably defense, and then the subclass. Champion will make crit slightly more likely, and again you could go Eldritch Knight if you want to get the bind weapon for more options for weapons late game if you don't want to use like Nairulna or something. But that's the concept, a well-known ultra strong pick. Moving on, another well-known top tier build is the dual hand crossbow builds. Not quite what they once were, but still very strong. And there's a bunch of ways you can run this. This could be Rogan Fighter, you might do a bard version for slashing flourish. Range is very popular too, there's a load of ways to do it, but whatever you're doing you're probably centering it around the sharpshooter feet and also archery fighting style to help counter the negatives of the sharpshooter. If you can get two weapon fighting on top then it's going to be very good. So there's many ways to get these things but here's just one strong suggestion, a ranger that's using gloomstalker as its subclass is probably going to be a great pick always. Here you can get the archery fighting style at range level 2 and then gloomstalker is going to start doing some serious work. It provides Dread Ambusher for their all-important initiative to get the first go and start smashing 
targets. It even adds an extra 1d8 of damage. Outside of that, you got things like Dark Vision and Umbral Shroud to turn invisible when you're in the dark too. So this subclass gives you extra burst to start a fight and helps you position during a fight. At level 5, you get extra attack to send out even more attacks. And by that point, you have your first feat, which would be Sharpshooter, completely removing the penalties of high ground rules, but also it increases the damage in exchange for that penalty to attack rolls. This used to be more busted because it didn't seem to actually affect your offhand attacks, but they've fixed that now. But there is an item in the game called the Risky Ring, which really helps with that. I like Ranger with Fighter. The Battlemaster subclass provides a lot of utility, and at just level 1 in Fighter, you get another fighting style option. So if you picked Archery with the Ranger, now you can get two weapon fighting, which will add your ability modifier to the damage of your offhand attacks, really improving the offhand damage potential. The Fighter will also give you things like Action Surge for an extra main action per short rest, and then Battlemaster for its superiority die attacks. Precision attack could be great to help get more consistency for the attacks, but there's loads of utility options there. Four levels into Fighter would get you another feat, and then you've got the three remaining levels for the class overall, which could easily go into Thief. That'd give you the second bonus action for your offhand attacks, but also things like Sneak Attack for extra burst as you're able to do that. This is just one way to run a dual hand crossbow build though. Like I said, there's lots of very strong ways. I'm sure there'll be more suggestions in the comments. For the next build, we can't really talk about the whole dual hand crossbow stuff without also mentioning a very strong stealth focused Gloomstalker assassin build. A unique playstyle about destroying your enemies from far and surprise in the dark and then leaving and returning to do it again. It's very flexible in an honor mode situation. It's also good because if things are going wrong, you can just leave. For the sake of variety, I'm highlighting the Titan String Bow build. The Titan String Bow is basically a long bow that provides extra damage equal to your strength modifier. Even though, yeah, you could still run this kind of build with like dual hand crossbows. But with Titan String and the fact that you can use the Elixir of Hill Giant Strength to absolutely carry, you can get a lot of damage via that. I'd start this out as a Gloomstalker though, pushing this to higher levels and then maybe respec to get the rogue part going once you're ready. Say six levels into Ranger to have a functional build early and then you can respec and go three and three in each. The Gloomstalker subclass is so good good for this concept thanks to the initiative, the extra turn to begin with the bonus damage all on your first attack. And then at level 5, if things go wrong, you can also use Misty Step to get out of there. When you're ready to go into the Assassin though, you want at least 3 levels still in Gloomstalker to keep that initiative and the first turn extra stuff, and then 3 levels into Rogue to get Assassin. Assassin's what provides the real burst though. Passively at level 3, you've got advantage on your attack rolls when attacking something that hasn't taken a turn yet, which results in better accuracy, despite that sharpshooter feat you'll be taking. Your damage should be nice and high there, with the fact that you'll always critically hit when landing an attack roll against a surprise target. And then there's that last passive that gives you your action and bonus actions back right at the start of combat as another fantastic perk. From here on though, we push the Gloomstalker all the way to level 8. This leaves you with just one last level to put back into the rogue to get another feat for the build. So yeah, the concept of this is to look to kill your enemies within one turn, maybe even multiple enemies before they get a chance to fight back. When they are able to react, you can literally just leave. Stealth, exit, teleport away, and then just return to the now dwindled pack of enemies ready to take out another and then just repeat until they're all gone. It is a unique playstyle, but it's definitely not for everyone. But if you're looking to do whatever you need to to clear on a mode, this is a great option. All right, so compared to the previous builds we've talked about, it'd be nice to have something more frontline-y. That's where the awesome Lockerdin comes in. This multi-class is a simple mix of Paladin and Warlock, leading to great survivability, but also good burst. The subclass of the Paladin's a bit up for debate. On the other hand, the Warlock is always going to be the great old one. You get Mortal Reminder, so when you crit, which does happen often, you'll cause fear on enemies, meaning they now have disadvantage. And at level 5 on the Warlock, you get the all-important Deep and Pact, leading to a second extra attack on top of your Paladin's original. Also, Warlock spell slots means you get your spells back every short rest, maintaining your output even after multiple fights. For the sake of variety, let's talk more about the Frontliner version. In this case, Oath of Ancients Paladin is a great subclass to go for. You get the Aura of Warding, which gives you huge resistance to spells. And as an Aura, if you have party members near you, they'll get it too. For leveling, you'd want max charisma you can start with, since your spells are scaling with charisma for both the Lock and Paladin. As a reminder, you definitely want to lean on the Hill Giant Elixir for the strength in Act 1 as usual. For leveling, you can start with your Paladin all the way to level 7. You get your subclass, the Smites, the First Feet, and Extra Attack at level 5. And at 7, you've got Aura of Warding going. From the Feet, we'd recommend 
recommend the Savage Attacker, which is found to be top tier for Paladins in general. Different from D&D, Larian has you rolling your damage dice twice with this, letting you use the highest result from that feat, which is super strong. From here, we can start the multi-classing though, with the remaining five levels going into Warlock. Your Warlock subclass is going to be the Great Old One, like I mentioned, and from your Eldritch Invocation choices, Beguiling Influence and Repelling Blast could be great here, but you can pick whatever you like. A level three Warlock, you want Pact of the Blade though, leading into its deep impact at level five. And also you're going to get another feat here, which helps push the Charisma even further. From this though, you'll have lots of choices for your spells and setups, using things like Repelling Blast to get enemies off your party when needed needed and kind of being a barrier around them. Next up, it's finally time we talk Bard though, which can be great for a party face, and also you're going to get an extra short rest. There's two kinds of very strong Bard builds to talk about, let's first talk about the very effective Control version. Played more as a support, and actually from ranged. Control builds are really strong, they prevent enemy actions, and make your teams more effective. This version can actually deal good damage itself though, thanks to the super effective slashing flourish of College of Swords Bard. This multi-class will actually weave in Fight and Wizard though, so during your leveling it could be a good idea to respec. So initially you start as Bard, by the time you level 6, you'll have the College of Swords subclass, you have your Bardic Inspiration, Song of Rest, Extra Attack, and the all-important Blade Flourishes. Slashing Flourish, when used as a ranged attack, can actually attack the same target twice rather than what it implies. So once you've got level 6, it's probably when you should respec. At that point, you can then work in one level into Fighter to help with the concentration saving throws. You can get Archery Fighting Style to help with the Slashing Flourishes you'll be doing. The second level can go into Wizard, which gives you the well-known ability to learn spells, via scrolls, and that can lead into an all-important haste buff for this class. The rest of the levels going back into Bard though, resulting in a 1-1-10 split. In terms of feats, you definitely want the sharpshooter feat to further improve your damage potential, and importantly, you're going to want to know what spells to take to actually control. Command is going to be really important, and you can get that from your magical secrets at the 10th level on Bard. I've talked about command on this channel a lot, but basically it lets you control enemies without using a concentration. You can knock them prone, you can disarm them, move them around, and still follow up with other spells to layer in more control. In general, whole person and monster, glyph of warding, fear and confusion, these are all great picks, while counter spell and shield are also going to be really helpful from say your wizard. Through all these options, you can AOE control packs of enemies while maybe hasting someone or full commit to the control. Whenever you get the option to do it, say things are under control, you can start spamming slashing flourish for real damage despite being a control build. So a super strong concept and a different playstyle. But I did mention we talk about one other bad playstyle for my last build today. This is more melee and classic, well-known strong as hell mix of paladin and bard. Bard and paladin scale their spells with charisma and bard is going to make great use of the smites with the bard spell slots. And just like the other Bard build, Slashing Flourish is going to be very important since that's just really strong. You get lots of utility and potential control from the Bard, but the build's much more bursty and damage focused. The levels are pretty simple though, 10 into Bard for College of Swords, and just 2 into Paladin to get you the subclass and the smites themselves. The subclass can be great for Vengeance Paladin, you get Inquisitor's Might, you often have that spare bonus action and that's a great use of that. And you'll also get easy access to Command, which we just explained is really good. Bard provides all the standard stuff, Song of Rest, Bardic Inspiration, Slashing Flourish, and you're going to get Extra Attack and Magical Secrets at level 10, so it's just very good. The leveling is going to be mostly Bard to begin with until level 7 though. So 6 levels straight into Bard, you get College of Swords, a feat and extra attack. Then on that 7th level we can start working in the Paladin for the Oath of Vengeance subclass. It could be a good idea to respec at this point to put the Paladin at the beginning, then you get its starting proficiencies. The second level into Paladin will get you the Divine Smite, that's where the burst of the build really becomes silly. And all the remaining levels go back into Bard for that 10 and 2 split. In terms of feats, again I'd strongly recommend Savage Attacker since it's just so strong. With this setup, you could use command in a clever way. You could command someone to approach you next to an enemy you're already fighting to double them up next to each other for a slashing flourish, allowing you to kind of set up cleaves in the middle of a fight. It's also a very good idea to take whole person a monster for further control with this build, and you can smash targets that are held too. In terms of magical secrets from the bard, I would recommend at least counter spell. You'll have nice high spell slots to always be able to counter anything dangerous, especially in honor mode. But yeah, there you have it. That's a pile of builds that are extremely strong with different playstyles to consider. I do hope there's enough detail to get you started or at least consider the concept properly before you go look at it in depth and find all the items and stuff. And there's even more multi-class concepts that are going to be great for this mode out there. Again, I'm sure we'll see some of them in the comments. But either way, good luck in your own honor mode attempts. And until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.